Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to stream directly into a database, specifically into an SQLite database via R. And we're gonna be using the Schwab API to request level one data for features, but you can use a similar approach as I'm gonna be showing you today if you wanna use a different streaming service. And in order to get this to work, I'm gonna be using three scripts. The first one, which is on your screen, contains all the functions relevant to this API. So whenever I need to use the Trader API, I just source this script. and this this file contains my app key, my secret code, and also access to my current tokens. And as long as you have something similar where you can refresh your access token, you should be able to run the streamer. Now in the script, I'm just gonna be using one function, which is get user preferences. And this function has no parameters here. And all we're doing is submitting a get request using this URL. We are gonna need the current access token. I'm gonna check if my access token is current, otherwise it's gonna update it. And I'm gonna be passing in that URL along with my current access token into the get request now ideally the page status code should be 200 if it is we're just going to extract the content and we're going to return it as a data frame and all it's returning is a list of your accounts along with some streamer information which we're going to be using in the following scripts otherwise it's just going to print nothing to return and if you get an error it's going to go ahead and print that out as well once you have this function down we can move along to our second script and in here i'm going to source all of my functions from the previous script and we're going to run the get user preferences function to retrieve the streamer info. Now in the script, I have functions and JSON blocks to get the streamer to work. The first two JSON blocks are to log in and to log out. So in order to log in to the streamer service, we need to pass in a JSON block with a valid request ID. Now this can be a random number. For the service, we're going to be using admin. The command will be to log in. For the customer ID and coral ID, we're going to extract that from the streamer info. And for the parameters, we need to pass in our current access token for authorization while the client channel and the client function ID can be retrieved from the streamer info table. Now to log out, it'll be very similar where we have the request ID, the service, the command will be to log out. The customer ID and coral ID are pulling from the streamer info tables. And when we log out, we don't need to send any parameters. So when you source the script, it'll automatically set these JSON blocks for you. For this particular tutorial, I'm going to be requesting level one data for futures. So we also need to build a JSON block for that. And what I have done is I have built a function where we can pass in a symbol and a command. So the symbol can be any future symbol in this case, and the command can be subs, unsubs, add, or view. Now this function is gonna start by determining whether the user entered more than one symbol. If they did, it's gonna create one long string separated by a comma with all the symbols. Otherwise, it's just gonna return that one symbol for you. Now for the JSON block, similar to the login and logout blocks, we need to pass in a request ID. The service will be level one futures. The command gets passed in from the function. Customer and coral ID are pulling from the streamer info table and for the parameters we need to pass in the keys or all the symbols that we are requesting data for and also the columns or the info we want from the streamer in this case it'll just default to all 41 so please take a look at the documentation if you don't need all the data and you just want to focus on particular columns such as the bid or the ask now in previous tutorials i showed you that once we received a message from the streamer it would dump that file or message into a folder in our working directory but in this case we're just going to bypass that and we're going to stream directly into a database. So we also need a function for that. And I have written one called write to DB where we pass in the message from the streamer. It's going to extract that message by using from JSON, simplifying to a data frame. Now from time to time, we get messages from the streamer that have a heartbeat, which just indicates that the streamer service is running, but it's not useful for us since it doesn't have any futures data. So we're only going to keep those messages that actually have data. And the way we do that is by testing if there's a data list inside of that message. Message. Otherwise, it's just going to overlook it. So if there's data inside of our message, we want to make sure we want to extract that. So we're going to reassign all the data into the level one data variable, extract the content into format data. Now, since we're streaming level one data, the API returns all the relevant changes. So it's not always the same number of columns that we get from the API. It's only going to send us the changes to any of the fields that we're requesting data for. So in this case, we're going to start off by formatting the column names so that we store them appropriately into the database. So it's going to scan our data frame. And if it detects any of these numbers as a header or a column name, it's going to reformat the column name. So we need to do that for all 41 possible column names. And all that it's doing here is it's testing whether that column exists. If it is, we're just going to change the column name. So make sure you do that for all the ones you're requesting data for. Once our column names are formatted, we can go ahead and combine everything into a single data frame. Now, as I mentioned, we're only going to get the changes. So we need to add some placeholders for the columns that we didn't get 
any changes for. And the way we do that is by testing whether or not that column exists. If it does, just return the data. Otherwise, place an NA as a placeholder. So it's going to do that for all the 41 fields. And we're going to return a single data frame for that. Now, this is the data frame that we're going to be passing along into our database. And before sending it to our database, I'm going to make sure to add the types for the columns. Now, the types are optional. The database will automatically detect what kind of data is being stored and assign the types for you if you don't want to assign any of the types. Next, we're going to assign our driver and we're going to be using SQLite for that. We're going to pass in that driver into DB Connect and assign it a database name. So here you would just insert the path on where you want to store your database. And once we have that connection, we can go ahead and write our table. Just make sure you assign a relevant name for this table. The value will be our data frame. We want to make sure we append and set our override flag to false and just pass in our data types here as the final parameter. Once it's finished writing to the table, we can go ahead and disconnect. And as I stated previously, if the message from the streamer doesn't have any relevant data, it's just going to assign it to null. So this will ensure we only store our level one data into the database. Now we do have some helper functions here. The first function will read our database into our studio. So we're using the same driver, same connection. The only change is instead of DB write, we're going to use the DB get query by passing in our connection and selecting everything from our database. The second function will just fix the timestamps. So we have a total of six that need to be updated as I have stored these as integers into the database. So once you read the table into our studio, we can pass that into the second function. It'll fix all the timestamps and return that table to make them more legible. Now, if the table does get big enough, you can create an index by following lines 1731 to 1733. So when there's a lot of data inside of the database, some of the queries may be slow. And when that happens, you can go ahead and create the index on a particular column. In this example, it's creating an index on the key or the future symbol. Once you have those functions set, we can move to the third script. And in here, we're going to start off by sourcing our functions from the previous script. We're going to establish a new WebSocket connection by passing in the URL available in the streamer info table. Now here, for every message that we receive, we're going to use our write to DB function by passing in the message. Previously, we would save those messages into our folder. And if you want, you can also uncomment this, create the level one futures folder and run both at the same time. When the streamer opens, we need to send our JSON login block. And when we log out, we want to make sure we send our JSON block with the instructions to log out. Now we can create our level one futures JSON block by using the function we built in the previous script. And here I'm just going to be requesting level one data for the e-mini SMP. The command will be subs. And in line 37 to 43, we want to make sure that the ready state is one, meaning that the WebSocket is connected and it's going to go ahead and print that state. Right after, we're going to go ahead and send our JSON block to request that data. So we're going to go ahead and run lines 1 through 48. Now to get the data inside of our studio, we're going to use our function called read all DB and we're going to wrap that in fixed DB times. So if we go ahead and run that and go to table, here we see 41 total columns and 103 different rows. We also see that our timestamps are updated. And as I mentioned, we have placeholders where we didn't receive any data from the streamer. Since we have the streamer running in the background, we can go ahead and rerun line 52 and we'll check table again. And now we have 204 different entries. So you can continuously request the data from your database, but if you need to stop the streamer at any point, you can run the final lines of code, which are 83 to 87, and this will stop the streamer service. We're gonna stop receiving messages and it's gonna stop writing into our database, but you'll still have access to the data inside of the database. So if we run line 52 again, and we take a look at the table there, we were able to get 254 different rows. Now from there, you could analyze the data however you want. You can go ahead and create an XTS object from it to plot the bid and the ask. So we take a look at the chart there, but that pretty much sums everything up. I'll leave a link down in the description area where you can find these three scripts. So please consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.